the long-awaited sequel to my installation video. And by long-awaited, I mean awaited by absolutely nobody. What's good everybody? My name is Rogue Ren. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be doing another sort of pseudo tutorial video and I'm going to be showing you how to set up Pop OS to look more like Windows for people coming from Windows who want it to feel a lot more familiar. Now this is going to be a little bit more complicated and that being you will need the terminal. So don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly what the commands that you need to use are and you can just copy and paste them. I will explain what they do to the best of my ability. Don't normally just copy and paste whatever you see. Make sure you research them, look into what they do, and make sure you understand what they're actually gonna do to your system before you run them, because you could very well screw up your system if you don't know what they're doing, which is why the terminal is typically not something I recommend to beginners, but if you are just here from Windows and you're not a power user and you just wanna make it look and feel like Windows very quickly and easily, the terminal is the best way to do that. So this will show you what you need to do, and hopefully it will help you get used to Linux. So with that, let's jump right into the video and jump over to the desktop. Okay, so here we are over on the desktop. So as you can see, my setup looks like Windows. Yours will not look like that. When you start off on Pop OS, you will have a little Mac OS style dock here at the bottom. Uh, it may go across all the way. It may just be right in the center. Um, depending on if you have 20.04, you may not have a dock at all. It'll be like hidden on the side right here. And you'll have a little bar at the top. It'll look a little bit more Mac-like than it will Windows or a weird little mishmash between Windows and Mac. Now you can customize that to look and feel a little more Windowsy by using GNOME tweaks. Uh, which I have tried out. I wasn't too crazy about it. And I think actually they're planning to add GNOME tweaks straight into the settings menu, if I'm not mistaken, or that might just be normal Ubuntu. Uh, that may not be Pop! OS itself. I'll have to double check that. But while you can do that, the one I'm going to show you is going to make it feel a whole lot more like Windows very easily and very quickly, but it will require the terminal because what we're going to do is that we are going to install KDE Plasma, which is a different desktop environment. A desktop environment is the bunch of GUI elements, which GUI, GUI is graphical user interface. It's all those elements that make up how your desktop looks and feels right here. Everything you see right here, this is all your desktop environments, the environment of which your desktop lives. So to change it, what you're going to do is you're going to open your terminal first and foremost. Now, if you are on Pop OS, I believe the default shortcut is just to press the super key, which is the Windows logo key and then T. Um, on KDE, the default shortcut is actually control alt and T. Um, I have changed that back to be super T and also in KDE, they call the super key or the windows key, the meta key. There's a lot of different names for it. Just know it's the, it's the key that has the windows logo. When I say super, or if I say meta, the key I'm referring to is the one with the windows logo or with your computer's maker's logo or with your keyboard brand logo. It's the one with the logo. I believe on Mac keyboards, it's the command key if you're do using this on Mac or if you're on a Mac where you booted Linux onto it. So you're gonna open up your terminal. As you can see, I have mine right here. I am going to make the text a little bigger by holding control and plus, plus sign. There you go, now you can see it. I'm gonna make it a little wider too. And so to install KDE, there are three different ways you can do sudo apt install KDE Plasma, and this will install just the desktop. It'll just do this. This will be the most stripped down version to have KDE. This will probably be the version that a lot of people want. However, there are two other versions. There's sudo apt install KDE standard. This is the one that I typically use because this also installs some of KDE's apps. So stuff like the Kate text editor, which I really like, and their screenshot tool Spectacle, which is my default screenshot tool. I also have Flameshot for if I want to do selection screenshots, and I just have that on my taskbar and it auto runs and a few other programs, but it's not going to be all of their programs and such. And if you want literally everything KDE makes, all the stuff that would come default in, for example, KDE Neon, you can do sudo apt install KDE 
full. This is the version I actually did initially uh, when I would install this. And then I realized that I actually ended up removing a lot of these programs. So I swapped to using the KDE standard whenever I install KDE on stuff now. But this one will install basically all of KDE's apps, almost every single one of them. I think it may skip on some really big apps like Caden Live it made on install if I remember right. But the majority of KDE's apps are installed with KDE full. It is like the full on version of KDE Plasma, the, which is the name of their desktop environment, by the way, that would be installed with like KDE Neon, which is their Ubuntu based Linux distribution. KDE Standard, I believe, is what comes with Kubuntu, which is an Ubuntu variant with KDE instead of GNOME. KDE Plasma. I don't think it's pre-installed on anything. I think it's really, or it might be the one that's used in stuff like Manjaro KDE or Arch with KDE. Well, Arch with KDE, you pick whatever you want because it's Arch. But I think a lot of the stuff like Manjaro or the Arch-based distributions where you can choose KDE, I think they come with the KDE Plasma version that's just the desktop environment because they're trying to be a lot smaller of an install. But KDE standard is typically what I use. Now, if I run this, it's going to already it's gonna ask for my password, so I'm gonna type that in. Um, it's gonna ask me if I wanna install it. I'm gonna say no, you're gonna say yes. Um, I don't wanna reinstall all this because I've already gone through it. But when you go through it, you will end up getting a bunch of text that'll be installing just like it will anything else in a terminal, which you may have seen in previous videos. Then you're gonna to get to a weird screen and I will pull up a screenshot of it very quickly. Okay, so here we are, I have It's Foss pulled up, which they're going to be my they're the guide that I initially used when I first started using Linux. So I'm essentially just rehashing their instructions in a sense, just in a video format, because some people like doing these things with videos. They want to see what you are supposed to do, which I appreciate why this one had screenshots. So you're going to get this little pop up that says configure SDDM. It's a display manager. You're going to click enter to press OK on this. This is what you want to do. This is just telling you what a display manager can do. You can only use one at a time for any given X server. By X server, it means X org 11, which is the display default display server for Linux. Though that is changing, there is another one called Wayland that a lot of stuff is moving towards and eventually will replace Xorg. I'm very excited for it. I personally can't use it yet because my personal setup doesn't work very well on it. But when you press OK, you'll get a little option and it'll have GDM3 or SDDM. GDM3 is what the GNOME desktop environment uses as its uh, sort of window manager thing. And SDDM is what KDE uses. You're going to want to hit the down arrow and when SDDM is highlighted in red, or it might be a different color. Uh, I believe it's just red though. I believe this is exactly how it looks on Pop! OS as well. They're using basic Ubuntu. You're gonna press the enter key to select it. And then once you're done, it's gonna start installing everything. Now this is going to take a couple minutes in order to install everything. And once everything is done, you'll be back to here. It won't say abort above it because you will not have aborted it like I did. I said no because I didn't want to install it. So it had aborted the process. And when you are done, you will see absolutely no difference. It will look, nothing will look different. And that's because you have it installed, but you're not locked into it. So what you're going to have to do is in Pop! OS, I believe it's in the top corner. There's your little power button. You're going to select to log out. You're going to get to your login screen, and then it will be in either one of the corners or below where you type in your password or below your user ID. One of those places will have a little drop down menu. Now it'll say like, X11 or Xorg or something like that, or Wayland or whatever you're using. And you'll see a little drop down menu and you'll be able to choose one called Plasma. That is what you're going to want to select. And then you're going to log back in. And when you do that, it will then load up KDE Plasma instead of Pop! OS is instead of well, not you're still loading Pop! OS. It'll load KDE Plasma instead of Cosmic or Gnome. Uh, which Cosmic is just a modified version of Gnome, a really cool modified version of it. I may be doing a video where I swap to it um, on a regular basis and use it for like a week or two to see just how much I feel about it or how much I like it in comparison to KDE. KDE is my favorite overall, and I think it looks the most Windowsy, which is what I grew up on. But then you'll have it. You'll have KDE Plasma and it will look not super great. Actually, no, it won't look bad now. Now it'll have their default breeze theme actually looks pretty good. However, you want to make it look really Windowsy. So let's say I open the settings menu and you'll notice I have the little windows looking things. Yours will have a little circle, an up arrow and a, or a diamond and then like a down arrow. They'll do the same things. They're in the same order, but they won't look like the Windows one. If you want to make it look like the Windows one, you're going to want to open your system settings, which should be on your taskbar. If not, you can open this. 
I have changed mine to be the little Windows 7 style. Yours will probably go out a bit farther and have like tiles and stuff like the Windows 10 version. And you want to search system settings and it'll pop up. Now it didn't pop up for me because I already have it open. And you want to go to appearance. In appearance, there'll be a thing called global theme. I'm using Plasma X Dark. I tried Wii 10 XOS, wasn't as crazy about it. Plasma X Dark is my favorite one for a Windows style look. You're gonna wanna install that, choose it as your global theme, and it will look like a Windows dark mode if Microsoft was actually competent to make a good dark mode. Now I've actually edited the colors a little bit. I've made it a little bit darker in some places and a little bit lighter in some places. So you can see it's like pure black in this area, but it's like a very dark gray in this area. And that's universally applied. And then you can go to something like Plasma Styles. And again, I have Plasma X Dark. You can go into the colors. You can see it's black. This is my modified version. The normal Plasma X Dark looks like this. It's a lot more of a grayish. I wanted the, a lot more of the black sort of look to it. Window decorations is where you'll see this. This is what's gonna change these guys. Now, you're gonna wanna modify it. Nope, that's not what you want. You want to go to title bar buttons. By default, you will also have something like pin, menu, maybe an application menu or something. And you just want to drag those off into here because they'll be all in this corner over here. I never use them. If you regularly pin stuff down or you want that menu there, by all means, keep it. I'm telling you how to make it look and feel a lot more like Windows, but you are free to edit it. Also, there'll be a context help menu right next to the minimize. I get rid of that because I never used it. Nextly will be icons. I'm using these, the Flat Mirror Remix Yellow Dark. I really love these icons. However, the default Plasma X Dark, if I apply them, and you can see how it normally looks. It looks a lot more Windowsy. if you can see all my little buttons down here. They look cool. I like them. I just like these more. So I apply that instead. And there we go. This is what my go-to icon pack is. And now cursors. There are several cursors you can get. There is a Windows 10 one called Win 10 OS Cursors. You're going to want to click Get New Cursors, and then you can choose the one you want. If you really want that classic white Windows one, you can. I don't like it. Um, also, it won't fully apply until you log out and log back in. Oh, no, I don't want that. I want that. There we go. This is this is my favorite cursor. I really like the little just arrow without the stem. I don't know why, but I love it. I also love black cursors with white outlines. But you could have a whole bunch of different ones. You can go through it. The Papa West cursor is actually pretty good. I kind of like that one as well. But this is a really good one as well. You just you're going to click get new cursors and you can search for whatever you want. So search for Windows and you can find a ton of Windows styles clones and also a bunch of Mac clones for some reason. Yeah, not sure what's going on there. Get old office cursors. Look at these. They're all steampunk. That's cool. And this, that's how you do like custom. Oops, didn't mean to click that. I meant to close that. And that's how you can make it do whatever you want. You can go through, you can mess with these to make them whatever you things you want. This is just how I have mine set up to look and feel right. And the global themes and the plaza styles and the colors and the window decorations and the fonts, the icons and the cursors and the all, all this fun, crazy stuff. Just there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do. However, there is one last thing you're going to want to do. If you go to the application styles, you'll see this button configure GNOME slash GGK application style. KDE uses a building blocks system. I don't know the exact name for it called QT. That is what they use to build all their windows, do all their theming and all that stuff. GNOME uses GTK for those same things. QT styles typically will not apply to a GTK application. So what you have to do is configure the GTK to have a similar theme. So you choose new GNOME GTK application styles. I have one called Windows 10 Dark 3.2 Dark. This makes it all of my GTK windows look similar to my GNOME ones. So let's see, what's a GTK application I have? I think Lutris is, there we are. So yeah, Lutris is uh, an example of this. So this is how Lutris works. And you can see its buttons are similar, but not exactly the same. If I look at the KDE ones or the QT built ones, they are just a little bit smaller. These are a little bit wider, but they are very similar, which is why I like this. This is close enough for me that it doesn't bother me. Some people want to have everything look the same. 
if they look a little bit different, it breaks immersion. Just no, it's not good, which in that case, you're going to want to find a theme in the global themes and stuff that has both a QT and a GTK version. If they're the same theme for both versions, they'll look the same and you can get around this. For me, this is close enough. This looks and feels like Windows. This looks and feels like Windows. It, what it looks and feels like is Windows with a competent dark theme, with the exception of Lutris. Lutris is actually a little bit lighter gray than I would like on its dark mode. I don't open Lutris enough for it to really matter. I use it to play modded Among Us, run VC face, and then like one game in Origin and oh uh, yeah. But yeah, that's gonna be about it. That's really the last thing. Once you've configured those, <laughs> there's really nothing left. It should be generally all themed up and ready to go. So it's not terribly hard. It just takes some time to mess around with all these settings, going through all these different menus and just finding what bits and pieces you like. Like before I was using this one, I actually had this applied, which would do stuff like make your taskbar look like this, which I actually liked a lot. But then I realized that the, the, the black one from this looked a little bit better. So became a bigger fan of this. And you can play around with these you can have some fun, mix and match. You don't have to make it exactly like mine. Actually, a really good theme that I found out when I was helping uh, my friend Lily. They found a Chromebook theme that actually looks really good. I really like it. I kind of want to try it out of my system or I may I may actually end up throwing it on my uh, laptop. Actually, that's pro that probably is what I'll end up doing. I'll end up throwing it on my laptop because that would be really cool to have. Uh, but that's going to be it for this. Hopefully this is helpful. If you have any sort of questions, make sure you can leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer some of them. Uh, you can check me out over on twitch.tv slash it's Rogue I'm more than happy to talk about Linux stuff during stream. Uh, so long as I'm not like reading on screen text, it's kind of hard to read chat while I'm reading something on screen, which is why I'm trying to get to more voice acted stuff where I can listen while still talking. Um, you can also check out my Discord. That'll also be linked down below. We have a tech support channel and someone there is usually very happy to help. Uh, can't guarantee there are people to help. They're not like paid employees to help you there, but we like to help each other. We have we find some weird problems and we like to put our heads together to try to figure out a solution. So it's fun time. Check me out over there. But with that, we're going to call the video here. And uh, I again, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.